Thomas A. Edison invented the phonograph in 1877 at Menlo Park, New Jersey. The first machine used tinfoil as the recording medium. Acoustical sound recording, as used on the tinfoil phonograph, Edison had the idea that the voice or other sounds could vibrate a diaphragm as he was working on the telephone to improve it so it could be heard. He found the power of the diaphragm that if he could vibrate this diaphragm, it might be possible then to vibrate a stylus and record it on something. Well, the tinfoil phonograph used a lead-clad foil. When you talked into the mouthpiece, it vibrated a mica diaphragm, which had an attached steel pin on it. This was a blunt pin, not a sharp pin. And when you talk, it indented into the foil. When they first tried it, nobody thought it would work. So Edison shouted, Mary had a little lamb, her fleece was wet as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go into the mouthpiece of the machine, expecting maybe only to hear a murmur at best. However, he turned the crank and set the reproducing stylus in place, which was also a burnished pin attached to a mica diaphragm, and the bumps then caused this pin to move back and forth to the undulations of the sound, pushing and pulling on the mica diaphragm, and the sound came out of the machine. He said he never was so taken aback in his life. First improvements in the phonograph after a 10-year dormancy was the solid wax cylinder record and perfected phonograph. And in 1887, Ezra Gilliland, who worked with Edison, was coming up with a phonograph which used a four and a quarter inch long cylinder record. That was 2.155 roughly inches in diameter. And this cylinder was made out of a wax-like material, which some collectors call yellow paraffin records. This material actually was 100 parts steric acid and equal parts saracen, carnauba, and beeswax. This made up the very first what are known as white wax or yellow paraffin cylinders. The phonograph, called the perfected phonograph, was a battery-powered instrument. The motor was run on two and a half volts. The recording process, when you spoke into the speaking tube or into a recording funnel, it vibrated a glass diaphragm held between rubber gaskets. In the center of this was a chisel-shaped cutting stylus. It was attached on an arm and adjustment screws would raise or lower the stylus into the record on a spectacle. To play this record back, the spectacle was put into the play position, which also had adjustments for up and down and left and right to align the stylus with the groove. The sound waves then that were recorded onto the record in a up and down Hill and Dale fashion would push and pull the stylus which again would cause the diaphragm to move up and down and issue out of the listening tubes or horn as sound. In 1889, the records were improved by an aluminum sodium stearate and saracen formula, which would last all the way up until 1902 for most commercial records. Next, the phonograph was improved and called the Class M phonograph about 1890 with a standard speaker which combined a recording and reproducing stylus on one bar to replace the spectacle carriage arrangement. This also had the sound vibrating a glass diaphragm. The diaphragm thickness was between five thousandths and eight and a half thousandths thick depending on the sensitivity of instruments to be recorded. A violin for instance will take a five thousandths diaphragm while a loud brass band would be eight to eight and a half thousandths to record a non-blasting record. A linkage went down to a floating weight which had a stylus that could adjust to the varying thicknesses and depths of the record. Sound hitting this glass diaphragm, vibrating the cutting stylus, and then cutting the groove into the metallic soap cylinder. This also introduced the first professional recordings, starting about 1890 with the first music catalog from the North American Phonograph Company, who created this video. The first music catalogs from 1890 to 94, and then with the National Phonograph Company taking over about 1896. This direct method of recording was used until 1902 when molded records supplanted direct recordings. Before the molded method, there also was a panograph machine. The panograph machine used a system of linkage and weights, a playback and cutting stylus. 
A master record was put on one side of the machine with the playback stylus while it transferred the vibrations to the cutting stylus and it cut onto the other cylinder. This was another way of mass producing records from one master. Still though, many times multiple phonographs were used to record sound on many cylinders to make copies. In 1902, a method where a perfect master was made on a phonograph that had a flywheel and more smoother action. And by 1903, the advance ball was used which raised and lowered the cutting stylus into the record at various depths and took all of the weight off of the cutting stylus by using the advance ball, which left the stylus to do its work more evenly and it could, a louder, clearer record could issue for a master. This master record was coated with gold by vacuum deposit. Two pieces of gold leaf were suspended in a vacuum jar. Inside this vacuum jar was a mandrel. On the mandrel was the master record. Two pieces of gold leaf were hooked in an induction coil with about 10,000 volts DC. When voltage is applied to this gold, it wants to go from one side to another, but the record is in the way. So the record is coated with an infinitesimally thin coating of gold. This makes the wax master conductive to electricity. This can then be coated with a copper shell of about 30 thousandths of an inch thick. Once the copper shell is made around the master record, the ends are then trimmed on a lathe and the master record could then be shrunk out by putting in a cold room where the contraction the wax master will allow it to be pulled out and the grooves that were in the wax master into the copper shell. This was then used to make mother records and then working molds from which copies were made. To make copies, a enclosed mold was used. This was first squirted with approximately 130 grams of wax. This was then whirled down a machine until it became cool enough to retain its shape but still hot. This was then put on a lathe when one end of the mold was open and ribs were put on the inside of the record. It then was put in an extracting machine, which used the force of gravity to extract the record. After this, while the record was still hot, it was put on warm cores for several hours, so the record can contract and not warp. This was then pressed out on a hand press, and that is how multiple copies of cylinder records were made.